All right, welcome to the Eddie Echo Show, Mr. Michael Paz. Great to have, great to be here, Eddie. What's going on? Hey, man, just loving being here. Just the ability to to sing songs and uh, trying to just be out there. So it's you mean here in Nashville or here right here right now in this moment? Right here in this moment. That's that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> beautiful day outside today in uh, in Nashville. What what'd you do today? Um, it was perfect. Um, uh, what did we do? I basically there was a, a couple a few little sad moments. There was a a family who had lost their little baby, so I was kind of oh. working with that and um, I had breakfast with some guys. But just yeah chilling out, enjoying the afternoon, uh, working on some music, and then just loving being here. That's a, that's a perfect day in Nashville. So how long have you been in Nashville? I've been here since March 2020. Uh, okay. Yeah, so it came here from Switzerland. Wow, uh, I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yeah, so it was a, a corporate career uh, working in Switzerland. I was abroad for about 20 years, um, working in various different countries. But um, prior to that, I'd always been in music, writing music, um, raised a family, but I uh, decided cold turkey that I, I wanted to go after the the, the dream, uh, the goal of what I'd always wanted to do, which was was writing music and writing music during that time. That's a good way to describe it, cold turkey, because it's because it's scary going into it. You know what I mean? It's very, absolutely yeah yeah. So uh, yeah, so just to, just to um, to 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 try. I mean, the whole notion that kind of like this parable where you have uh, a talent and you can hide it under a stone or you can utilize it. So I'm saying, hey man, I'm 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 going to 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 try. Uh, I'm not responsible for the result, but I am responsible for the trying and to be faithful to what your heart says you should should try to do. So that's that. awesome. So let's jump into your first song. Sure. Um, first song is called um, "Move My Ship," and it's kind of a thematic in regards to the the whole notion of doing one thing and not thinking that you can actually go ahead and pursue a dream, but to actually go ahead and do it. Uh, the song's called "Move My Ship." Years can pass through thoughts sometimes Of all the things you've done Sometimes, yeah, you wonder If the years they ran too long I should have tried you looking back At the history chasing you Saying, why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? Reading you the news Time to make my getaway Trim the sails Time to lift that anchor up And dive into the gale Blow wind, move my ship Move my ship along Blow wind, move my ship Make the bow up and then yawn Blow wind, move my ship Move my ship along They are sticking to the meaning of my name With such beliefs, the feelings freaky Refuse to go away I should have tried you looking back At the history chasing you Saying, why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? Reading you the news Time to make my getaway in the sails Time to lift that anchor up And dive into the gale Blow wind Move my ship Move my ship along Blow wind Move my ship Make the bow up and then yawn Blow wind Move my ship Move my ship along out to the window at the years of all past two. The friends I've made, the things I've done, they help me learn to choose. But still my feelings call on me, they keep me on the shore. But now I say it loud and clear, no
ship, move my ship along. Blow in, move my ship, make the breaking waves all run. Blow in, move my ship, move my ship along. Blow in, move my ship, make the That was awesome. Man. Oh, thanks, man. I, I really like the uh, the metaphors in there. Yeah. It's good lyrics. Thank you so much. When did you write that one? I wrote that actually a year before I came to Nashville. So it was around probably the early 2020, late uh, 2019. Was that over in Switzerland? That was over in Switzerland. That looking was, at a nice mountain pass and yeah, absolutely. the river and the birds. And yeah, looking at the mountain pass, the birds, and just thinking about what's coming up to move to Nashville and the kind of the idea of pursuing a goal and being excited about it and being determined and to kind of write the words like chitter chat, um, mm -hmm. looking back that the history chasing you, you know, that you're, so you're, you're, you're so putting you're, that aside. You're just now getting to this dream and um, uh, actualizing it. Um, but when did that get planted in you? How did you start in music? What was, uh, you know, what was it like growing up? Were you influenced? Who were your influences? In yeah. Th um, my influences, well, I listened to a lot of classical music through my dad when I was, when I was growing up. Uh, he had a lot of a lot of problems, but one cool thing about him was that he actually <laughs> introduced me to music. But also at the age of um, it was age of eighteen or nineteen, my dad was a professional, uh, and he thought that going into music was really not the cool thing to do. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be a lawyer or a doctor or something. He actually was a composer at at, at a time, and his father tricked him and saying. Um, I tell you what, son, you go to uh, medical school, and um, then F after medical school you want to be uh, a musician, you can go ahead and do that. But by that time, it was all water under the bridge. So mm. I was super determined to, to, to be a musician. So at the wow. age of 18, just started at, at that time, I took uh, lessons from a guy by the name of Darwin Aiken, piano lessons. I took guitar lessons from a guy named Ivan Merkel. Really was serious about pursuing it. Then was uh, writing um, uh, uh, playing in coffee houses and whatnot. And where did you grow up originally? I grew up in Toronto, Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. I didn't know yeah. you were Canadian. Eh? Yeah, I'm a legal alien. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you've lived a lot of places and yeah. had um, some interesting experiences. So what specifically drew you to Nashville besides, like, I mean, did you come and visit before? Had you been here many times? Or? Yeah. I mean, it was sort of a, it was kind of an analysis where I said, okay, there's either three places that you can go. You can go to LA, um, you can go to Nashville, or you can go to New York. Um, and so I did this analysis, and I kind of, kind of did a, a Gantt chart and a comparative analysis, kind of analytical in that approach. And I was actually shocked and surprised to find that Nashville is really the music city of the United States, not just country, but mm -hmm. production and piles of people that were moving over here. Um, and so if you... They basically said, if you want to be a singer-songwriter, if you want to perform, you really have to be in So we show. actually met at a, uh, a night, the Blue House Band, shout, shout out to them, over at the Bowery Vault in East Nashville. Absolutely. And I saw uh, Michael get up on stage. I think I, I played that night as well. Yes. And it's kind of, for anybody who doesn't know, it's kind of like almost like an open mic type of jam where you can uh, give them your chart for your song. You jump up with the band, even though you've never necessarily met them or even been in that room, and they play your song on the spot. Absolutely. And uh, it's definitely a fun night, and yeah, that's for me and Michael met, so yeah, it was, let's jump into another one. Okay, let's man. Yeah. So the next song is um, just kind of a perception. Uh, it's called What's Wrong, What's Right. Uh, per, and it really kind of rides the words right down the middle, not basically saying this is right or this is wrong, but that the world is becoming so kind of um, extreme in its views that the mm -hmm. idea of having a normal conversation is more and more, more difficult. Um, it's very black and white. It's, yeah, mm -hmm. very black and white. Mm -hmm. So this song is called What's Wrong, What's Right. Someone says they're right or Someone says they're wrong Someone singing melodies To someone else's song Someone says it's day or Someone says it's night Others say the world is much too bright 
Others say the world is much too brave Where is the direction? Where is what is true? Who's the proper judge of all the things we say and do? Who stole all the gravity that keeps us on the ground? Why are we all floating all around? Why are we all floating all around? But I think there'll be a day When everything is good When everything is just for the end Be all as it should But until we reach that day Let's simply realize The world won't let us see What's wrong and what is right The world wants us to scratch the world wants us to fight To make us feel the pain of black and white To make us feel the pain of black and white Some they say it's fashion Some they say it's waste Some they say it's ugly And others say it's taste Some they say it's feelings Others say it's cruel Why do fallen things move like they do? I think there'll be a day When everything is good when everything is trustworthy and be all as it should But until we reach that day Let's simply realize The world won't let us see What's wrong and what is right The world wants us to scratch The world wants us to fight To make us feel the pain To make us feel that pain To make us feel the pain of black and white To make us feel the pain To make us feel the pain To make us feel the pain of black and white Awesome. I absolutely loved it. Thank you. Um, man, so this will probably be the first brand shout out, but that Martin sounds amazing. Oh, thank you Tell so much. Tell me about that. How long have you had that for? And Well, actually, I bought it from my son, um, who's, a, who's a songwriter as well. Awesome. Um, and he became a, a program. He still writes uh, songs uh, a lot, but I asked him if I could borrow it, uh, particularly for this occasion. Oh, that's awesome. Is he in Nashville too? Um, he, is in, he is temporarily living in Nashville, but he's actually now in California. He has a job. Uh, cool. That's uh, a good pro- thing. Yeah, pro- <laughs> uh, programming, yeah. And so he, he's coming back. Um, he's lived around the world as well, various places in Mexico wow. programming. And So it sounds like you really came from a musical family and the heritage continues. Absolutely. So, yeah, um, do you think that it runs in the bloodline? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it runs in the bloodline because they knew that I loved music so much. Mm-hmm. And so they saw their dad writing music all the time, writing songs all the time. And they saw me being happy while I was doing it. So they yeah. associated that kind of thing that... If you write music, man, you're in a, you're in a really good spot. Yeah. In a really I meet good place. a lot of people, though, who, you know, I came from a musical family as well. Mm. My grandmother was an organist, and everybody in my family plays guitar and big music people. But I also meet a lot of people who kind of didn't come from that background at all, yeah. which is impressive. Um, but I think, like, if you, you know, you look back in your lineage, and you're a great example of that. Even your son is playing, and, you know, your dad, and yeah. it's, it's awesome. Um, all right, so this is the part of the show where we talk about what's coming next and what you're working on. Yeah. And what so, your goals are. Yeah. So what my goals are, um, they, they're, they're kind of like there's this business model of developing 1,000 followers. So I'm actually taking that quite quite seriously. You know, real followers too, r- people. R- yeah, real followers. People real. that you meet in per, in person. <laughs> yeah, or otherwise, uh, meeting yeah. in person. Uh, and then actually Chaz Mazota, who, who you know very well, has been helping me uh, greatly. He, I think he also 
um, works with you on, on, on the show. Shout and, out Nashville Pops, actually Nashville one of Pops. our sponsors here. Uh, he's talking about Chaz Mazota, and he does videos and all types of things, uh, audio, mixing. But Michael has worked with him, and I think that's how we were, we were even originally connected. Yeah, so um, he I mean, he's helping me with the whole notion of Facebook ads. How do you build an audience that's specifically good to Eddie Echo, like mm-hmm. Eddie Echo's music, why people love Eddie Echo, and be able to, to, to build that kind of uh, fan base, and to do it seriously face-to-face and um, working on it. Uh, and then the next thing I'm, so that's a, th- a thousand people. The other idea is to be putting out music pretty much every six to seven weeks. So I've done uh, 10 songs so far in a year and a half, or basically a little bit less than a year. Um, and continuing to to promote and and to to uh, to do that, and then another goal is just to perform as much as possible. I mean, just to get out there. Like I heard you say in a lot of the other shows, where there's so many different venues and opportunities to oh, be yeah. out there and, and trying your wares and meeting other people. And it's and, always changing. You know, places open, pa- places close, yeah. and scenes kind of uh, come and go. But the thing is, with Nashville particularly that I've loved is that there's a constant. Yes. And. Um, I think you're a great example of somebody who is just out here for the right reasons, you know, on that, you know what you're trying to learn, you know what you're doing. And you're also a great example that it's it's never too late just because you come from a certain background or you think, Oh, my time's passed to try that or this. You can at any point start writing, start making music and people will, will be attracted to it. Um, and I mean, if you go from like playing other people's songs and then you, you're kind of writing every once in a while, but now you're at the point where like you're writing and releasing songs, yeah, which is a whole nother kind of uh, grind. Yeah. And then, and then learning that, I mean, learning the craft of, of the actual production side. So all the music that I've done pretty much other than two songs where I was really lucky, there was one song that was produced by Bill Schnee who did um, Steely Dan Asia, but it was a, a nice. Pretty, it was a, um, a benefit, and he had a heart for it, so he helped it. And he got some fellow musicians like Eric Darkin, who a percussionist for uh, Jimmy Buffett, to, to play on this one um, one piece. So it was like a one time. But the the idea of learning your craft, uh, understanding how to work with the DAW, all the various things. And then also I, I did a class from New York, actually, which I know that you, you love New York. You were there yep. five years. Um, and mastering.com with uh, uh, Blake LaGrange. And so I learned how to master as well. Awesome. And I know that, um, I think there was this other gentleman, uh, Fabian. Um, Nick? Yeah, Nick oh, Fabian. Yeah, he was actually on the show uh, the last season. Yeah. So Nick's I was, a good friend of mine. Yeah, so I was listening to it, and he was saying, yeah, I, he produces and mixes and masters all his stuff. And then yep. he goes to other people for 80% if there's like anything that needs to be tweaked, but to That's learn kind of where I'm at as well. Yeah, yeah. To learn. And yeah. And I listened to your stuff as well, mm-hmm. man. It's super, super good in regards to the production and the quality. And I appreciate it. Yeah. And yeah, the, the forwardness of the drums and your vocals and the, the bass being, you know, right there and definitely taking a couple of years off my life, sitting in front of the computer, just, you know, yeah. moving knobs and but it's whatnot, good. But it's yeah. really, really good. And so, yeah, just learning that I think is important and that helps your whole songwriting and the speed at which you can then produce because back in the olden days, you couldn't, as an indie artist, do all those things, but mm-hmm. now you can. You it can. sounds like you have a very calculated approach too, which is uh, a good thing, and it's great to have people around that know where they're going. Yeah, you know, very, very much so. Just mm-hmm. really understanding that it's a business, enjoying it, but understanding it's a business, and you and you have to put the work in, and it's not something that you just kind of have a pie in the sky dream and you just show up and then everything is just going to work. No, you, no. you know, just like yourself, working you know many many years, applying yourself. Building a show, building a fan base, filling followers, yep. building a name, building the right team, too. building the right team. Exactly, mm-hmm. your guys that are that are that are with you. Shout uh, out Mervin and Chaz. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. Cool. And, so, uh, um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. If you no, no, no. You I was just jumping into the, uh, the last song. Yeah, or? let's definitely yeah. let's let's do it. What's this one called? I this one song's this one's called "I Love to Dance." So, the whole notion of, of of rhythm, it's pretty interesting. Like if you look at James Brown song, you know, like funk or whatever, the the, the beat or the mm. the actual chords are pretty simple. But if you can build a nice melody and a rhythm around it, it's a lot of fun. So I'm about to jam on this with you. Yeah, Let's here go. we go. Beat pops, fires me up. Pump drums, rhythm of love. Said rhythm is what I live for. Hi hat, what you think of that? Run 16, baby, what dreams said rhythm? What I live for? I love to dance, it puts me in a chance, makes me want to want to get to know you. I 
love to dance Puts me in a chance Makes me want to get to know you Baby, I hear rhythm in your ear The way you move groove Dance like you do, said rhythm What you live for Baby, I hear the rhythm in your ear The way you move groove Dance like you do, said rhythm What you live for To dance puts me in a trance, makes me want, want to get to know you. You got the rhythm. You love to dance, puts you in a trance, makes you wanna grab your man and say, I wanna get to know you. you got the rhythm. You love to dance, puts you in a trance, makes you wanna grab your man and say, I wanna get to you know you. You love to. In a train makes you wanna grab your man and say, I wanna get to know you. you got the rhythm. I love rhythm, the rhythm loves me. Ain't no prison that sets me free. I love rhythm, the rhythm loves me. Ain't no prison that sets me free. I love rhythm, the rhythm loves me. Ain't no prison that sets me free. I love rhythm, the rhythm loves me. Ain't no prison that sets me free. Yeah. Rhythm, what I live for. Hi hat, what you think of that? Run 16, baby, what a dream. Said rhythm, what I live for. I love to dance, puts me in a chance, makes me want to want to get to know you. Mm. You got the rhythm. Puts me in a trance, makes me wanna wanna get to, to know you. You got the rhythm, yeah, yeah. You could love to dance, put you in a trance, makes you wanna grab your man and say you wanna get to know you. You love to dance, put you in a trance, makes you wanna grab your man and say I wanna get to know you. I love rhythm, rhythm loves me. Ain't no prison that sets me free. I love rhythm, rhythm knows me. Ain't no prison that sets me free. I love rhythm, the rhythm knows me. Ain't no prison that sets me free. Oh, I love rhythm, rhythm knows me. Ain't no prison that sets me free. It sets me free. It sets me free. Oh. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. Thank you Absolutely so much. Absolutely awesome. Um, I love those kinds of changes. Yeah. I can play that kind of stuff all day. And it was a, just a pleasure to hear you playing with me. It just sounded great. Good time. So I think our next guest, uh, Tony, is walking in. Uh, I know you work with him a little bit as well. And Absolutely. The Blue House Band. And what's that experience been yeah, like? Yeah, so with working with the Blue House Band has been absolutely fantastic. They are a band where you bring a chart to them. Um, right now we're at the Bowery Vault. They're going to be changing their venue uh, coming up. But uh, right now they're at the Bowery Vault. You bring a chart. They play it. Um, and musicianship is just unprecedented. Tony is an incredible keyboard player, and also I just found out when I heard him play guitar as well with Alex Bagnata. Um, I actually just recorded this song with them over the weekend on Sunday. Awesome. So, yeah, they're just, yeah, big shout out to the Blue House band, big shout out to Blue House uh, recording uh, studio with Alex doing the production and the other yeah. guys that are playing. They're really uh, amazing. And Chaz, the great connector. And, the, and Chaz, the great connector. Yeah. Absolutely. He's, 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 he's made it um, awesome. really fun and, and working with, with, with everybody. So. Awesome. So tell everybody where they can find you and what's coming next. Yeah. So um, you can find me. Uh, there's a website, uh, www.michaelpost.com. So there's a website there. which POS. Has a POS point of sale. Uh, <laughs> and then um, you can also follow me at Michael Post Music on Instagram. And also Michael Poss uh, on Facebook, if people still do Facebook, um, it's called Rhythm and Chord Stories and uh, Questions. And what I'm working on now is these two songs that I'm working with, the Blue House Band, which I'll be releasing, I Love to Dance. There's this recent song that I did called I Do Try, which is 
the, the little darker side of my dad. He was a bit of a raging drunk. He was a little violent. Um, mm. But it's kind of like a cathartic song of being able to get that out there. Wow, and, that sounds pr- pretty intense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, music's a constant. You know, yeah. people got um, bad lives. People are good people. People are assholes. People are everything in, in between. Yeah. We got to bleep that part. I forgot. I can't curse. <laughs> but, um, you know, music's a constant. Yeah. And I think that when you get those good things from people as well, they, right. it comes through uh, the music. Yeah. So on that note, this has been the Eddie Echo Show, and this has been my guest, Michael Paz. Thank, Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much, Eddie. Hi everyone, my name's Mervyn. I'm usually behind the scenes at the Eddie Echo Show, but hey, thanks for watching this episode with us. If you enjoyed this artist's music and you would like to follow them, check out their links down in the video description. If you would like to join a community of fellow artists and creatives around Nashville and the world, be sure to check out Nashville Pop and Chaz's community, also linked down in the video description. Lastly, if you want to be in an upcoming episode of the Eddie Echo Show, we'd love to hear from you. Check out our casting call linked in the video description below. Stay tuned and we'll see you next week.